Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. If you're using WordPress, a decision that you're gonna have to make is whether to go with a free theme or a premium theme for your design. You might be having a debate in your head which one to go with. You might go back and forth. So let's discuss the pros and the cons of each. I'll provide examples of themes that are the best for free or paid. And hopefully by the end, you come to a conclusion that you're comfortable with. Let's start with free. The main benefit is just that. You can get a website up and running for very low cost. The only thing you really gotta pay for is domain registration and a cheap shared hosting plan. And you can install WordPress for free and you can install a theme for free. The last time I looked, the WordPress theme repository has over 8,000 themes to choose from. There's gonna be great options if you're not that interested in having an elaborate design. You know, free themes are very good if you don't care that much about design and you just want a minimalist website. And I think you'll learn faster if you have a real project out in the real world and you start working on that as opposed to watching tutorial video after tutorial video, trying to figure things out by watching somebody else do the work. I started with a free theme. In fact, the first website that I put together was a blog on the NFL and I had a free theme installed on that and I even installed a forum on that website to match the free theme. That's when I was learning HTML, CSS, that kind of thing. That's really the basis of how I learned WordPress. The other advantage of free themes is that you can go from theme to theme. I mean, if you wanna test out 10 or 20 different themes, you don't have to worry about forking over your credit card in order to do that. You can see which one fits your website the best. Obviously, there are some downsides with free themes. The main one is that the developer is under no obligation to update that theme. So a lot of times what happens is somebody comes out with a free theme and it's on the WordPress directory, but they might stop updating it. It might not have security updates. You're not gonna get support. You know, Usually I think on the um, WordPress site, you can leave a question for the developer, but like I said, if, there's, if they're not getting paid for it, they're way less likely to answer you. Free themes also have limited features. Because of that, it's gonna be harder to customize. You're gonna have less options for customization built into the theme. And just overall, free themes are more of a cookie cutter template. Because they're free, you're gonna have a lot more people online with those same themes installed. Because free themes are so prominent, it's gonna be hard to separate your design from somebody else's unless you dig into the details and get to know how to customize. This is not always necessary. I always like to say that the content on the website is way more important than the theme. And I mean, I've wasted so many hours trying to customize and tweak little things here and there that do nothing to build an audience or get people more attached to your content. If you're gonna go with a free theme, what I recommend is starting with the WordPress developed themes. The two most recent ones are 2020 and 2021. And I also have a free training that will take you step by step using that theme to launch your blog in 14 days. Not only does that go into a little bit more of the customization side, but you're also gonna figure out how to set up a blog for success outside of the blog, like email marketing, social media. We dig into all those steps in the training, so I'll include a link to that in the description below. A couple more of the most popular ones are Astra, Ocean WP, and Generate Press. Now onto premium themes. With premium themes, you're gonna get a better design, first of all. A lot of times premium themes are built for a specific niche. So you might have a design that's specifically geared towards maybe like a food blog or a lawyer website, that kind of thing. It'll have features built in for that business niche. The biggest advantage is just customer support. Like I said, with the free themes, you have to do everything on your own. With premium themes, they're probably gonna have a better support guide, better documentation, and then if all else fails, they should have a contact form or a way for you to contact them to get answers directly from the team. Most theme companies also have software developers in-house, so they put out updates more frequently. A lot of paid themes give you advanced features for building your website. For instance, many of them nowadays are drag and drop. You can kind of get the look you want just by your own creativity. And on top of that, a lot of them have pre-built layouts or child themes that you can install. If you're looking to build professionally with WordPress, especially if you're looking to freelance and build multiple websites, I really think that you have to go with a premium theme and get to know it very well. I think one of the worst things that freelancers do is just pick and choose different themes for every single client project and you don't get to know one theme really deeply. It's better to go with a theme that gives you more of the customization options and learn how to use every single one of those features available to you. 
because otherwise you're kind of relearning every theme and how their customization options are set up because that's completely up to the developer. Now, what are the cons of premium themes? A premium theme means you're paying money, so it might be cost. The way that most of these themes operate is that you pay a recurring fee. Some of them offer a lifetime, but you're generally gonna pay either monthly or yearly. And your theme doesn't stop working once you stop paying, but you're gonna stop having access to the customer support and the updates. Then you also have theme marketplaces like Theme Forest, which I'll include a link to in the description below. They're great for low cost, one-time payments. I think normally a theme on there costs anywhere between maybe $30 to $80 or $100. Those are more specifically built for a, a type of business or niche. So if you're looking to put together one website, I think that's a great option. If you're looking to put together multiple websites, I think you wanna go with a premium theme framework that gives you more flexibility. Premium themes are also a little bit harder to learn. You know, when you go and look at a demo of a premium theme, it's gonna look great. And that's because they spent a few hours customizing every area possible. And when you first install it, it might be kind of blank. It's gonna take you some time to get up to speed with how you can customize a premium theme. The other downside is if you have more options to customize and there's more slick features built in, designs, anim animations, that kind of thing, you may have worse performance versus a very simplistic minimal theme, even if it's free. You know, a free theme might be faster than a premium theme. My favorite premium theme nowadays is Divi, and it's the most popular drag and drop builder on the web for WordPress. I have a full tutorial building a landscaping website with that, which I'll link up in the top right here. That'll give you a look and see how easy it is to make a great theme from scratch. And Divi is no doubt one of the most popular themes for WordPress freelancers for that reason. It makes it really easy to either pick a pre-built layout or do it yourself from scratch if you're looking to maybe imitate another website. I'd say the second most popular one is Elementor. I'm not sure if that's a separate theme. I know they have a plugin where you can add content and drag and drop design, kind of like Divi, it's very similar. But I learned Elementor and, and stepped through it with another tutorial on my channel, which I'll link up here in the top right. I think from a design standpoint that the Divi templates and content modules are a little nicer looking than Elementor, but they're both great options to do drag and drop if you wanna customize without learning code. And then two more popular options that I've never personally worked with are Beaver Builder and Genesis. I think Genesis is probably one of the most popular. They've, they've been around for a little bit longer than some of these other premium themes. And I believe that they were bought out or maybe they partner with WP Engine, the hosting company. So if you like premium WordPress hosting with WP Engine, they give you the Genesis themes with that. So you're kind of set up to build your website under that framework. So hopefully understanding these pros and cons, you'll be able to make the best decision for whatever website you're building. If you'd like to build a blog, check out my training. Like I said, that'll set you up in 14 days. I divided it into daily chunks so that you only have to spend maybe 15 to 20 minutes per day instead of trying to do everything in one day and cramming it into like four or five hours. What I really did for that is eliminate any massive creativity or design because like I said, I think the most important thing is just to get out there and start publishing as soon as possible. You can incrementally work on your design over time. And I think it's better to make the design once you have some content on your website as opposed to vice versa. A lot of people try and get the perfect design before they write one post or one page. If you want to use WordPress professionally and build websites for small businesses, I highly recommend Divi. I'll include their link in the description below. I really think buying Divi is a no-brainer if you know for a fact that you're going to build many, many websites. And I also got another giveaway for freelancers, 15 tools to start your web design business. Divi's included in that, but you can also see other design, testing, accounting tools that will help you get up and running with your freelancing business. If you learned a thing or two in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more web design and WordPress videos. And if you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.